It's estimated that invasive species cost humans around $423 billion each year, but in some cases, invasive species can cost people their lives. Some invasive species cause damage by destroying ecosystems and wiping out native species. In some places around the world, dangerous species have been introduced outside of their native range, and unfortunately they have taken the lives of local people. I have made a similar video on this topic before, but as it is so complicated and controversial, I've decided to make a part two. Invasive species are often unfairly villainized, but in the vast majority of cases, we are the reason that they are invasive. These animals are simply just trying to survive, and even though they do need to be controlled, they need to be controlled humanely. Without further ado, we can take a look at our first invasive animals, and to find them, we will be heading over to Asia. Asian hornets have garnered quite a bad reputation, and this is mainly due down to their invasiveness. In this video, I will be focusing on two different species, the Asian hornet and the Asian giant hornet. The Asian hornet is native to East and Southeast Asia, and across its range it has many different shapes and forms. The Asian giant hornet is the largest hornet in the world, and it's native to temperate and tropical East and Southeast Asia. To some people, these hornets are known as murder hornets, as they are capable of taking human lives. The stinger from this hornet is around 6mm long, and they are able to inject quite a potent venom. The sting is usually very painful but not fatal, but it can become fatal if you go into anaphylactic shock. In Japan, this insect kills around 30 to 50 people each year, and this is why it's a feared invasive species. The Asian hornet's venom is not as potent, but it can still kill a person if they go into anaphylactic shock. Both of these hornets are invasive in some parts of the world, as the Asian giant hornet has been spotted in North America multiple times, and the Asian hornet has established itself in Europe. These insects are not only a risk to humans, as they're also a risk to the ecosystem. Asian and Asian giant hornets will prey on bees, and these insects are important pollinators. The bees in their native range have learnt how to fight back against these hornets, but the bees in North America and Europe are almost defenceless. This is why so many people are alarmed by their presence, and they are often destroyed as soon as they are found. In North America, nobody has been killed by an Asian giant hornet, but in Europe, people have lost their lives to Asian hornets. Asian hornets first made their way to France in 2004, and since then they have killed at least six people. A 57-year-old man in Normandy was one of the most recent victims, and in 2018, a man was stung by an Asian hornet while driving his car, and minutes later, he fell unconscious and crashed into a post. He later died from severe anaphylactic shock, and this just goes to show that the murder hornets are not the only murderous hornets. For our next invasive species, we will be heading over to Colombia, and we will be taking a look at the hippopotamus. Now I have covered this story quite a few times on the channel before, so I will go through it quite quickly. But if you're unaware, there are hippopotamuses in Colombia. Four hippos were kept by Pablo Escobar in the late 1970s, and after his death in 1993, they were allowed to wander around his estate, and eventually they found their way into the wild. Since then, they have multiplied at an astonishing rate, and there are now hundreds of these animals in Colombia. Of course, a non-native animal of this size is going to cause some damage, and these hippos are affecting the ecosystem. As they are so aggressive and feed heavily on plants, they can displace native species, such as the West Indian manatee, the neotropical otter, the spectacled caiman, and native turtles. Their wallowing behaviour also leads to algal blooms, and often these algal blooms are toxic. For a while, these animals were seen as a tourist attraction, but soon the government knew that they had to do something about them. In 2009, one of these hippos was killed by hunters, but this caused considerable controversy. They were met with backlash from animal rights groups, and all plans for culling ceased. In 2017, a hippo was caught, castrated, and released, but this process cost around $50,000. Eventually, in November 2023, a plan was put in place, and this involved some hippos being shot, some being sterilized, and some being transferred. This plan was put in place after a few famous incidents, but it's still debated if hippos have killed anyone in Colombia. 
Last year, one of these hippos was killed in a car crash near Medellin, and at least two people have been attacked by these hippos in the wild. One fisherman was attacked in his boat, and a local man was tossed into the air by one of these hippos. Despite there being no recorded fatalities, they have been blamed for a few disappearances, and this is believable as hippos have started to be trafficked in the area. Their young are often stolen and then sold to wealthy ranch owners, as they've become a bit of a status symbol in the area. It seems as though people are trying to copy Pablo Escobar, but as these animals are so dangerous, it can easily end in death. For our final species, we can head over to East Africa, as we will be taking a look at the giant African land snail. This snail is a very hardy species, and it can be found in many different habitats across East Africa. Just like most other snails, this species is a herbivore, and it feeds on a wide range of plant material. In many places around the world, this snail is kept as a pet, and in some countries it's even bred for food. This is part of the reason why it's one of the worst invasive species in the world, as many of these snails have escaped and they multiply at an astonishing rate. They can be found in many parts of East and Southeast Asia, and they're also a real problem in South America. These animals can displace native species, and they can also cause real damage to agriculture. Strangely, these snails can also cause damage to buildings, as they will feed on concrete and plaster. This is so that they can get calcium for their shells, but they can cause thousands of dollars worth of damage. When fully mature, they can produce 200 to 300 eggs a month, and this means that they can take over areas surprisingly quickly. These snails were first introduced into Brazil in the 1980s, and they were marketed as a new food source. Commercial breeders started importing these snails, and even private homeowners began rearing them. It didn't take long for them to find their way into the wild, and now they can be found in Venezuela, Colombia, Paraguay, Argentina, Ecuador, and Peru. Unfortunately, not only are these snails annoying pests, but they're also surprisingly deadly. These snails can carry a deadly nematode parasite known as rat lungworm, and when ingested, these nematodes can make their way to the brain, and in severe cases, this is fatal. These snails are blamed for thousands of deaths each year, and it looks like they'll be in South America for many years to come. Rather unsurprisingly, these snails can also be found in Florida, but as they aren't really eaten there, they are less of a threat. Hopefully we can learn lessons from these mistakes, and we'll have less problems with invasive species in the future. If there are any other animals that you think should have made it into this video, then let me know down in the comments below. But thanks for watching, and until next time, goodbye.